So, hello everyone. Uh, as I'm not a professional lecturer, you've seen, I have my safety belt with me. You never know. <laughs> so I'm sorry if you hear some noise of crunch paper or something like that. <laughs> I apologize. Um, so bringing the public voice to the public, or in other words, how can we as simple actors of the public try to convince the rest of the public of the benefits of vaccination? And how can we help to restore confidence in vaccination? Well, you know, I'm, I'm a vaccine advocate, I'm a vaccine ambassador, and uh, also, all above this, the father of a gorgeous little girl, and I'm, yes, <laughs> this one, called Laura. For you who were also present here in November 2011, you will certainly remember the moving story of my little girl, so I will uh, not tell it in detail again, but I will give a short summary for those who don't know me yet. Anyway, a full story is still available on our website, as well as the full lecture I gave here in this room three years ago. So, Laura was born in the summer of uh, 2010 in perfect health, so pretty, so lovely, as you can see. Uh, it was for us a kind of dream come true, but not for a long time, because she died 83 days later from pertussis, more commonly known as whooping cough. What first started as a banal runny nose ended after 18 years in intensive care unit in a nightmare. She was too young to be vaccinated and has been infected by one of us who came home with a cough. Nothing more than, than a cough, we thought, as well as our GP. But that cough has a name and it was whooping cough. Well, as you can see here, according to a study from the CDC, uh, the household is responsible for about 80% of contamination. So during her stay in intensive care, uh, she has been connected to a ventilator, to an ECMO bypass, to a dialysis machine, and she finally died from a bacteremia when all her vital organs had given it up due to the daily job of, uh, of the toxins. Of course, we were devastated and left with uh, unanswered questions. Why and how could this have happened? Have we done something wrong? Are we careless parents? Is there something we should have done? So, naturally, to, find, to try to find answers, we began to score the web, and we discovered that the tragedy could easily have been avoided if we had been better informed. So, we discovered uh, that in April 2009, so that means one year earlier, our health authorities in Flanders organized a prevention campaign during the European Immunization Week, a campaign entirely devoted to whooping cough. And you see below on a slide, uh, it's clearly mentioned that if you want to protect your baby, well, begin by protecting yourself. One year later, in 2010, the same authorities organized a new campaign called Pregnancy and Vaccination, and in which one, whooping cough was the main topic. You see, it's clearly advised to vaccinate before, or better, during the pregnancy, or eventually, immediately after delivery. Uh, you see there on the right side, I highlighted and translated the paragraph when we, we, where we speak about vaccinating during the pregnancy, exactly what we, what we should have done, exactly what we would have done, but we were not aware of it. We finally discovered uh, the letter sent by our authorities to all gynecologists and to all GPs in Flanders. It was a letter insisting on the on the importance of cocoon vaccination, a letter prompting GPs and gynecologists to vaccinate all pregnant women during the third trimester of the pregnancy. So, we had found answer to our questions, but it raised a lot of new questions now. Why haven't we seen any poster or any flyer? Why have no one of the healthcare professionals passed the vital information on? 
why have doctors paid no attention to the recommendation of the authorities? You know, we've been waiting for Laura for three long years with several miscarriages. So how is it possible that during these three long years that we've been in touch with the medical profession, not even one doctor gave us the vital information that could have made the difference? So, we could not accept that the loss of Laura has been for nothing and we decided to launch our own awareness campaign. But at this point, and before starting anything, an analysis of the situation was needed. And so we were surrounded by the health authorities, up to date with their recommendation, that's why they are in green color, surrounded by the healthcare professionals, at that time guilty, according to me, of nonchalance, complacency, and a lack of concern. Surrounded by the public, the public has a wrong idea of childhood diseases. The public is hesitant due to anti-vaxxers, to the Wakefield affair, to aluminium, to autism, and so on and so on. We find also the University of Google, when we can find good things and very bad things. And also in Belgium, anti-vax clusters, not lobbies, but clusters, with their traditional lies, fallacies, alternative nonsenses. And so we were there in the middle with a message, but without any medical background. So we decided to tell the story of Laura with our own simple words, words that everyone would understand, and we created a website with two main purposes. The first one was to, to find and to give support to other parents who face the same experience and it's so far that we are now in touch with uh, parents from Australia a lot of people coming from Australia here uh, from the United States Great Britain France and also very close to other Belgian couples of course the second goal of the website was raising awareness about the seriousness of the disease by showing its real face through our quite simple story we were not vaccinated anymore. We infected our, our little girl and she's dead. I insisted to show the real face because people have a wrong idea of what pertussis is. When you search on Google, this is the picture that the entire world associates to the disease. Okay, it's annoying, but I guess this little boy is going very much better now while the real face of whooping cough, the face that I know, is this one. Babies gasping for hair, babies turning blue, babies connected to life support, babies disabled for life, and also babies dying. I would like to thank the parents of Malakai and Sasha for the authorization to, to show the, the pictures today. You know, anti-vaxxers spread fears about vaccines using simple words, and it pays off. You will see a picture of Mary, disabled after being vaccinated. We all know that this is misleading, but that's what the public will remember. What's the legacy of the Wakefield affair more than 15 years later? People are still reluctant to the MMR vaccine, with, as a consequence, an alarming comeback of measles. While studies to support vaccination are often composed by indigestible data with complicated charts in a language that only specialists will understand, and all this science-based evidence which will be easily slept, swept away by only one single sentence, Mary disabled after a vaccine. So that's why I insist on showing the real face of the disease and not to cause a panic wave among the population, no, but only to show that even in the 21st century and even in our regions, a childhood disease still can kill infants. The authorities and the pharma industry must build a relationship based on trust and confidence with the public because the public asks for clarity and transparency. And I remember it has been said here in this room three years ago Science needs a face. We trust people more readily than we trust faceless organization or the data they produce. Parents prefer narrative information 
and tend to trust other parents more than they trust their own health authorities. So, scientific evidence alone has become insufficient to convince the public of the benefits of vaccination, and it's here that we parent have a role to play. So let's come back on the website. Once launched, it didn't take a long time for the media to relay the story of Laura in newspapers, on TV, in the 7 o'clock news, on the radio, in magazine, and so on. Consequence is we have been invited to give lecture at conferences, in universities, in midwife schools, and also last year uh, for the European, European members of Parliament in Brussels. We also received support from well-known science-based platforms which, which published our story. And this all together gave another dimension to our cruise. But once again, uh, without medical background, we were not allowed to give medical advice. So we were missing a kind of partner to support our awareness campaign. And it's here that we could rely on our health authorities. On their side, they were also happy to have find a partner ready to speak to other parents despite the pain of the losses and in using a language that everyone understands. So we have been asked by the authorities to join the communication work group set up for Flanders in their eight year action plan 2012-2020. Uh, a lot of important objectives and deadlines have been set, as you can see on the slide. I cannot put, the, put them all on the slide. There are much, very too much to, to put on one slide, but I put some, one of them from 2014 to 2020. Uh, I have to add that this plan has been approved by unanimity by the Flemish Parliament and is already in force since uh, 2012. Um, so our regular appearances in the media raised a lot of questions from the public to their GPs about open cuff and the need to be revaccinated. And it created a kind of snowball effect that prompted the Belgian Superior Health Council to update its guidelines on open cuff vaccination. So the most important is the first topic, of course, it's, it's clear now that uh, we, you, you have to vaccinate each pregnancy between the week 24 and 32. Uh, I have to, to, to say that uh, I received last year a message from the board of the council to thank us for our perseverance and our restless combat and saying that even without any medical background, we played a major role in their rapid decision taking to update the guidelines. And lately, uh, our health authorities decided to offer a free whooping cough vaccine to everyone living in Flanders. So that means uh, not only for babies, for children, according to, to the vaccination schedule, but really for everyone with a booster each 10 years. The authorities just started a new uh, prevention campaign encouraging pregnant women to be women to be vaccinated during the first trimester of, of the pregnancy. So all in one, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this was our way of working to bring the public voice to the public, but we are not alone. We are close to other parents in Belgium who are rather more active on blogs and forums to counter anti-vaxxers. They prefer to work in the shadow, anonymously, because they don't want to face the assault of the anti-vaxxers as we had to. They also built two Facebook pages devoted to Uping of Awareness, the one in French, Cocluche Sensibilisation, the other one in Dutch, Kinkus Sensibilisering, the two official languages in Belgium. And here, uh, I don't want to limit myself on Uping of because uh, there are several other couples from Flanders who lost their children on chicken pox. They created their own non-profit making organization and a website full of information on the disease and testimonies from other parents. Their way of working is they organize road shows in Flanders from town to town. They sell sweeties in train station. 
they sell even cupcakes in the form of chicken pox pimple, you know, with a red and a little bit white sugar, both. <laughs> They have created a flyer that every new parent will receive when the baby turns one. They have also they made a song available on iTunes, and they have also a Facebook page and reached quite a lot of people. And I'm pretty sure the next guideline to be updated in Belgium will be the guideline about uh, chicken pox. Well, you see, we have things in common. Our stories are authentic. We want to share them with the public to avoid other tragedies. And we do it with our own simple words. Words that everyone understands. And also the public can now put a face on Opinkov, put a face on Varicella, and that's exactly what he needs. Now, the title of this session was Stop Talking in Tongues and Engage the Public on Health and Science. Well, ladies and gentlemen, when I thought about my lecture today, I first intended to stop it right now, but I will not do it. Because I don't want to make the same mistakes as three years ago when I gave my lecture, uh, no one or nearly no one dared talk to me anymore because of the sensitivity of the subject. I'm the first to understand, of course. So I will tell you a little funny anecdote to help, and I will give you one more slide. What's the link with this, this well-known slide? Well, often, very often, people told me, but Danny, with your experience, with uh, all what you've learned about Upinkov, about vaccines, about the way they work, how safe they are, uh, you're the best place to fight and to counter anti-vaxxers anti on their website. You're the best place to, to debunk their insane uh, terrorist ideas, uh, and so on. So why don't you do that? And you know what I tell them? I tell them because I'm lazy. I'm lazy. I choose for easiness. Because it's very much easier for me to try to convince millions of people of the benefits of vaccination than to try to convince only one single anti-vax troll that he is wrong. And that was it. Thank you. Thank you.